Now, I'm going to park it probably on this first, uh, you know, first six, seven, eight, nine verses of this chapter because this is a really important doctrine and point to drive home. And before we even get into the divorce and remarriage stuff, I want to point out just right from the very beginning, the attitude that these Pharisees had. And it says that you know, the Pharisees um, came on him, tempting him. So what are they doing with Jesus? They're testing him, right? They're, they're trying to, to find fault with him instead of going to him to learn and to receive truth from, they just want to find some way to bring him down. Their intent is never good. It's not even a pursuit of truth. It's not even a, you know, it's one thing to not receive Christ, but they're just trying to find fault with them as opposed to going to him, say, maybe they had genuine, sincere beliefs that were different. Then why didn't they go to him in truth, trying to talk to him instead of just trying to nail him with something, right? They go to him, tempting him, but then look at their, look at their attitude, look at their heart. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? This is for just basically for any reason you want. Hey, is it lawful just to get divorced because you want to? I mean, just, just come up with a reason and go ahead and do it. Unfortunately, this is the society that we live in today. You know, it used to be, in this country, it used to be very difficult to get a divorce. And it ought to be. Because it's a legal process that needs to happen because when you're legally wedded, you're, you're legally married, in order to dissolve that marriage, you need to go through a, neat, a legal uh, process in order to dissolve that marriage. And yes, I believe that this should be handled by the law because it is handled by the law in God's law. When someone gets married, you may not see a marriage license because license just means permission. I'm not talking about having that, but at the same time, I mean, there are restrictions and rules on who can get married. Right. So it's not, I'm not even that upset with using that term or whatever, but what do they do in the Bible when someone wants to get divorced? They get a bill of divorcement. And that's something that happens, you know, decently and in order in a, in a setting where someone has the authority to write that bill of divorcement and to acknowledge that and, and for that to, to come to pass. Now, um, God's law also handles what situations are acceptable and what aren't. And Jesus handles that in this very section. And to be honest with you, anyone who wants to know about this issue, because there's a lot of people who are ignorant about this, a lot of Christians, a lot of new believers, you know, just a lot of people in general are very ignorant on this subject. I think, my opinion, Matthew 19 is the best place to show people how God feels about this. There's, this is handled in many places throughout Scripture. We're not going to turn to all those places tonight, but there is so much in just this one short passage that Jesus is teaching, and it has a lot to do with just what's the Spirit? What does God want for you? If you want to know what God's will is, Jesus answers that first. So when he says, they said, hey, can we just put away our wife for every cause? That's the wrong spirit. That's the wrong attitude. Well, can we just go ahead and just get divorced? How about instead, you know, the, the better question would be, is there any reason in which a man may divorce his wife or put away his wife, right? That, that would be a, a more appropriate uh, way to ask the question if you really wanted to know because we obviously see marriage, a union, a joining. I mean, you could read all throughout the scripture and, and how beautiful marriage is and finding a wife and having a... That is glorified. That is magnified. So the more appropriate thing would be like, is there even a reason? Is there any way that, that a person can be you know, divorced, can be separated from their spouse and it would be legitimate in the eyes of God? Instead, they're saying, well, can we just do it for whatever we want? Because that's where their heart is. Because they want to just be able to do it for any reason at all. Now, I'll tell you what, too, before we get started, this is a topic that causes division. And I think it's just about every single time I've ever preached on this subject, I seem to lose somebody. It's just the way it works, because people get upset by that. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case tonight. We don't have a very large crowd tonight, but I've had people approach me about this, people who just started coming to church. I've had, you know, questions. 
and I'm never going to lie or back down on what the Word of God says. Not even to keep somebody coming to church longer. You say, but Pastor Persons, wouldn't it be better for them if they could stay in church and if they could just grow by other things, even if they don't get that one right? Not if it means censoring God's Word in order for them to do it. You know what's better? It's to let them know the truth before they go and make a mistake. Now, if they go and make a mistake after they know the truth, what else am I supposed to do? I'm not going to withhold that from them, though. No way. Because then what are you going to pick and choose to preach out of God's Word? Who am I to withhold and, and, and decide what's better for them? You know what's better for them is for them to hear the truth. That's what's best for anybody. And the sooner the better.